Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about a really cool gun that I uh, never thought would ever be on this channel. Uh, they're extremely rare in this country and the only way to get one is with some assembly required. And you'll understand what that means a little later in the video. But we have to start off this video by reminding you of a video that we uploaded just a little while ago. We did a video on a Chinese Type 56 Spiker. That was lent to us from one of you really cool viewers. This gun comes from the same viewer, so you gotta let him know down in the comments, hey, mystery man, dude, you're doing this for us. You're doing this for the viewers. Thank you for lending this cool stuff because I never would have access to one of these. And what this is, is a Taiwanese Type 65. Very rare in this country. Some of you might not even know that this is a thing. We're gonna get into all of the juicy details in this video. It's got a long stroke gas piston. It's not totally an AR thing, so you'll forgive me for having more AR content. But anyway, let's go ahead and tear into this thing, but not without a shout out to those sponsors. Guys, as you know, the biggest supporter of this channel is Third Pin Threads. And in today's video, we're wearing our baked t-shirt, really cool bake light mags. Anyway, if you wanna to donate to the channel or support the channel in any way, you know that we don't do Patreon and we don't do ads for, you know, ball sack razors. We're just not into that kind of thing. And I know that you're not into that kind of thing. So if you do wanna support the channel, you should get something for your money. Pick up a cool hat, get a cool t-shirt. You're gonna look super fly with this stuff on. And every time I see a third pin shirt or hat out there, man, it makes me feel good. Thank all of you guys that pick one up. I want to take this time to give a big shout out to one of our largest channel sponsors, and that is Slate Black Industries. They have solutions for all of your MLOC accessory needs, and we have a discount code. Use Clayco to get 10% off your entire purchase. A special thank you should be dropped down in the comments to Henry over at Slate Black Industries for hooking you guys up with this discount code and helping out the channel as a sponsor. We have the Taiwanese T65. A very cool alternative to your plain Jane AR-15, even compared to like a really cool, not so plain Jane retro AR. I'm talking your A1s, your A2s, the really cool carry handle stuff, which as you know, I'm not a big AR guy, but I like retro AR-15s. Uh, this is no AR-15, it is very different, although it is heavily based on the AR-15. They went about it slightly different. Uh, the way it operates, the sighting system, the controls are exactly the same, the furniture is slightly different. Uh, but if you know your way around a 20 inch AR, you're gonna be right at home with this. But the bonus is it's a very cool, very rare AR alternative. Some of you might be familiar with the Wolf A1 uppers. That's the long stroke gas piston upper. That's, you know, they've been selling those things for years at this point. You might not know that that is based on the actual, you know, military grade rifle that the Taiwanese have been using now for decades. It all started here with the Type 65, kind of like how our modern M4s all started back with the A1. This is the A1 of the Taiwanese rifle world, right? There's not a whole lot of like military surplus kits that come in the country that are easy to own. What I mean is there's, there's tons of them, right? A lot of them have mags that are completely unobtainium. These take AR-15 Stan Ag mags. Or a lot of really cool Milserp kits come in with rounds, ammo that you either can't afford or you can't find it. Obviously, this is 223556, so you'll always be able to shoot it. So it is a very cool, very rare uh, military grade uh, imported kit that you can actually live with and shoot. And obviously the controls are the same, so you know your way around this thing. You can get mags for it, you can get ammo for it, which just makes it really cool. It makes it like Daewoo cool. I love Daewoo's because the mags and the ammo are available and you get a really cool, interesting gun that's not just a boring AR-15, and this definitely scratches that itch. So what's so different about it? Well, if you think A1, you think carry handle, right? This obviously has no carry handle. This has a sight picture that looks very much like an A1. If you were to aim down the sights of an A1, this looks very similar. Obviously, this has a 20-inch barrel, just like early A1 M16s. Birdcage flash hider with holes all the way around, like early A1s. Front sight post, pretty different. Maybe at 50 feet it looks like an A1, but it is very different. Obviously it is a cast part. It has a bayonet lug, sling swivel that has a ton of movement, and a very sharp front sight post, as you can see there. And night sights. How neat is that? Because they liked playing in the dark back then, but this does have night sights. It is pretty sweet. Obviously they don't work anymore, 
The tritium has long since exhausted, but still there, still kind of cool. Since we're on sights, we'll show you the rear sight here. Um, it's just two ears and a peep aperture, dual peep aperture, and your night sights. They sit up pretty tall. I tried to hit targets with them. Couldn't hit targets with them, but it's just neat that they're there. Uh, the furniture on this thing is, to me, it looks exactly like black Bakelite material that you would have found on A1 clamshell handguards, stocks, and pistol grips. It looks exactly the same compared to my clamshell handguards on my dissipator that are actual A1 handguards. It all looks like the exact same material uh, to the naked eye. Give you a close up of that. You can see that gas piston hiding in there. Big vent holes up top, big old vent holes on the bottom. And you can see here where it splits. Splits from top and bottom instead of A1s that would split from side to side. You know, A2 AR-15s eventually would go to clamshells that split top and bottom, kind of like this. Although the way these things are held on and they, the, the, the way that they mount is totally different. They're actually held on by a bolt here. Once that bolt is removed, this lifts off. And there you have your piston. Pretty neat, huh? Pistol grip is basically A1. It doesn't look like it's made out of the same Bakelite material. This just looks like a solid black plastic, not like a fiber infused plastic like the handguard, but that's virtually A1, no difference there. The stock, however, is A1 length, same length, but it does have a slightly different shape. See, it's kind of more concave here. It doesn't have that continuous line. Nice and straight there. It does have like this interesting kind of like pebble finish. You know what I mean? There's the back of it there. Trap door exactly like an AR. And you have a sling swivel that swivels a lot. Remember, this is a military surplus kit, so the barrel is not original. Lower receiver is not original. Uh, other than that, everything else is straight out of the kit. Everything from the furniture, the upper receiver, the bolt and bolt carrier, the trigger components, safety components, the uh, bolt hold open, the mag release, front sight post, bird cage, and the takedown pins. All of that is surplus. It's all original to the original gun, which makes this thing cool. And as you can see, this thing has a ton of character. Just look at the amount of finish that has been removed from use over the years. How beat up these hand guards are. The front sight post is actually remarkably in very good condition. I've heard horror stories of guys that have picked up some of these kits and they're eaten up pretty good with rust. I don't know, I didn't talk to the original owner all that much about what it took to uh, make this thing into what it is today. However, I think he got lucky and got a good one, but I do like the wear. If I were to get one of these, I would want one that looked really beat up. That's what makes military and even uh, law enforcement surplus guns so cool. It's what makes AKs cool. AKs look really cool beat up. AR-15s and their variants are starting to grow on me with like really cool been there, done that wear on them. I'm starting to really love that look, like exposed aluminum, scratches, dings, dents. It's one thing to think, well, that guy didn't take very good care of his gun, but it's another thing to think this gun is two to three times older than I am, and it's been there and done that, and that's how all that stuff got there. It's just cool. It's like finding wood furniture for your AK that has trend chart on it. So we took this thing to the range. We shot it a butt ton, right? We shot it a ton. And I gotta tell you, uh, recoil impulse, maybe just slightly a bit snappier than a DI AR-15, but because it is a 20 inch barrel, the dwell time, the weight, everything about it, it is a mild shooter. Doesn't have much recoil at all. 
The controls are exactly like an AR-15. Mag release, trigger, safety, it's all in the same places. So running this thing took absolutely no practice, but it was fun. Uh, some of you have to have like the new, new, you have to have the free float uppers. You have to have the newest optic. You have to have the l -can. You gotta have the Trijicon, the ACOG. You gotta have all that cool stuff. Some of you are just terrified to get good on iron sights. All this thing is ever gonna have are iron sights. There's no way to mount an optic on this. Eventually they came out with Picatinny uppers way later, decades later. You get into like the Wolf A1, something very similar to that. Um, this is only going to be iron sights. Iron sights are freaking fun. This gun is fun to look at. It's fun to hold. It's fun to talk about with your friends because no one knows what the hell it is. And it's fun because it's on iron sights. As you guys know, we are an FFL 0702. We have an SOT, so that means we can have post sample machine guns here on the channel. So you know, this upper will just fit on an AR-15 lower. We have a post sample lower. When we did that, it did this. That was dope. It shoots awesome, it's accurate. Of course the magazines work, of course it shoots a uh, round that's gonna be accurate for you. I think the whole point of this video is, these things are out there, they're available, they're really freaking cool. You should definitely try one. Do a quick Google search, you'll find them. I looked as I was filming this video, the kits are available, they're out there, they're not cheap, and they come with some assembly required because it's a kit. What I absolutely love about it is maybe at 50 feet it might look like an AR, but then when you get closer, this is something very rare, very cool, that's going to start a conversation. I'm a car guy, I've got a little Fox body in the garage, I like to go to car shows. That used to be my scene for years and years, right? So what I can compare this to is, there's a lot of dudes that will go to a dealership and buy a brand new car. Maybe they go buy like a Viper, a Corvette, a GT500 Cobra, something brand new that's cool, and they can buy their way into being a cool guy at a car show, right? There's also the connoisseurs out there that maybe the guy shows up with like an old Datsun. Maybe the guy shows up with like a sick four-eye Fox body. Maybe the dude shows up with like an old Scrambler uh, CJ7 Jeep, like something old and cool or maybe something really weird and obscure. And it took a little know-how to get it. Maybe he had to do some of the building himself. And uh, that guy showing up to the car show Usually people will trip over that brand new Corvette to go look at that weird car they've never seen before. Maybe it's like a weird JDM import or something. That's what this gun is to me. I feel like if there were like such things as gun shows, not gun shows that like you go buy guns from, but like a car show where you show up and you show off your gun, right? This would be that gun that you would just let it hang out, let it chill. You'll have a line of people wanting to ask you about it. What is it? Where did it come from? Is that an AR? I've never seen this thing. I thought I knew ARs. I don't know what that is. That's what this is. It's just freaking cool. That's the Taiwanese Type 65. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I didn't ramble too much about it. It's just cool. I didn't know a whole lot about these things when I first uh, you know, borrowed it from that really cool viewer. I had to do some research on it. What I like to do with guns, I just wanna go shoot them. I like to shoot weird, interesting stuff and just see how it feels. It's almost like trying different foods. You never know. Just flavors the spice of life, right? This is just another flavor and it tastes good. Anyway guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this kind of stuff, just weird guns and a lot of AK content, feel free to subscribe. Leave us a comment down below. What would you like to see on the channel? Obviously we do a lot of AK stuff here. Uh, we like to get baked over on third pin threads and we do like weird AR-15 alternatives. We do a lot of different ways to go about the AR-15, whether it's with different calibers, different mags. I'm into that kind of thing. 
If you're into that too, let me know down below and I'll try to seek those guns out and I'll try to film them and put them on the channel for you. Thanks again to the viewer that let us borrow this very rare beast. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. So yeah, I think, uh, unfortunately, I know this was the 60s, but they really should have thought about collapsible stock. Obviously it made all the difference. Increased rate of fire, increased mobility. Yeah, increase, increase the size of my PP as well.